Welcome. Today's episode covers the open source tractor, Lifetrack. We've built the first prototype with very encouraging results. We start with a brief des description of Lifetrack, what we've done and where we're going, and why this could be really important to you. First, what is Lifetrack? It's a simple but high performance four wheel drive tractor slash skid loader with articulated steering. We have built a number of prototype attachments as well. The loader, backhoe, rototiller, tooth bar bucket for digging, the CEB press also, the power takeoff shaft, and power takeoff generator. What is unique? Well, most of the above is nothing new or special, but here how is how it's different. First, it's absolutely the simplest design possible. It's merely a box with wheels. <laughs> it's made out of ordinary 4-inch square steel tubing available at your local metal supply. It is bolted together or designed for disassembly. This is essentially the life-size erector set in action. Indeed, the entire tractor can be taken apart with wrenches down to the steel nuts and bolts in a period of one hour by four people. We will document this in another episode. Continuing with the discussion, the engine powers a hydraulic pump which supplies hydraulic fluid to power everything from cylinders to motors. To all parts are exposed. The above simplicity and transparency make it simple to maintain and repair, thus providing for a lifetime design tractor. Make it or buy it once in your life and you'll never have to do that again in your whole life. Plus you can pass it on to your children and their grandchildren. Well that's only the beginning. If you're familiar with tractors, you will appreciate when I say that Lifetrack is both a skid loader and an agricultural tractor in one. Basically, Lifetrack can go back and forth rapidly like a skid loader and it can do agricultural tasks like a tractor. See the link on a, on a wiki for a comparison. That's also only the beginning because we are doing 10 times price optimization over the competition. We are not inventing anything new. We are just open sourcing. This means optimizing by using open source design, an open design process, and community supported manufacturing. I will cover that in a separate episode. But for now, did you know that you already paid for our fabrication facility by your donations? You already shared the capital risk and we'll be giving back to you with optimized production of optimized product. That's essentially how it works. It can also be said that we have nothing yet, but if and only if we stopped right here and did no more work on Lifetrack. So here's where I point out that there's a huge difference between a prototype like we have now and a viable product. From this point we take each issue one by one and solve it. It's simply a matter of continuing the effort so that you have a lifetime product that never depreciates in value. Now that's a tall order, but that's where we're going and this is why we're asking you to sign up for the Thousand True Fans campaign to support this work with ten dollars over the next two years every month. Better yet, you can contribute by coming here to do physical development. For example, Sam Rose, our first true fan, is coming here in spring to document Lifetrack work in detail and to write a proposal. We invite you also to get involved whether in Lifetrack or in any of the other projects along similar lines. Let me put it this way. If we can deliver a machine that outperforms any competition and costs ten times less, is it worth supporting? 
The answer is obvious. The next question is, is it possible? Here's where we get into the economic analysis. The base cost for our tractor and loader materials was $4,000, using almost all new parts. If we consider fabrication at $50 per hour with digital fabrication or a torch table cutting out all the metal, it takes about 40 hours to produce the tractor. Does that sound optimistic? Well, yes, if your mindset is on a, on a traditional tractor, but not if you're talking about a simple but high performance box with wheels. The total is $6,000 if you, if you include the labor for a turnkey product or $5,000 if, if you're going to buy a kit that you assemble yourself. Well, the counterpart from the mainstream is $50,000 for a separate skid loader and a tractor. See the links. So you see, in here we have factor 10 engineering possibilities. We'll be discussing the production model in further episodes because this claim is quite radical and you're probably skeptical of this ridiculously low cost prediction. It gets better though. Now we consider Lifetrack with just about every implement conceivable. Those range from wood saw milling, compressed earth brick pressing, well drilling, farming, agricultural combining, to digging, earth moving, shoveling snow, and so forth. To illustrate the cost difference for the open source version compared to that, that for standard off-the-shelf equipment, we simply sum up the totals. The open source infrastructure is $30,000, as you see in the table, and the industrial counterpart costs about a quarter million. Labor assumes skilled labor at $50 per hour in the scenario of community-supported manufacturing. For price comparison, you could buy a new car or the above infrastructure for building and feeding an entire village or community for the same amount. Well, what if you're not into agricultural agriculture or building? Let me put it another way. If you eat you are involved in the food system. If you live in a house, you're involved with the building industry. If you would like these two areas to be carried out more ecologically, then a robust, inexpensive tool that can help to do this can also help put many people in business doing these things, agricultural, sustainable building, sustainably. Well, this is only a brief introduction. I'd like to wrap up here and invite you to comment on the blog or by sending us an email to opensourceecology at gmail.com. In particular, what do you think about our interpretation and, and predictions? Is this important enough to support financially? Well, that's all for now. We'll cover the CEB Press tomorrow.